been to meet Carol Maund of Arts Bournemouth and Fabian Rigol of The Secret Cinema on the set, which was still being built at a location which, for the time being at least, must remain strictly confidential. That sound you've just heard indicates that there's quite a lot of going up and down in some pretty old-fashioned lifts. We're, we're part of the uh, embarkation part of the journey. We're going down very slowly. I hope this lift is supposed to go at this speed. It's crawling down on either side, past us in a beautiful grill. Ah. Yeah, we've arrived. We've arrived somewhere. This is a very sort of alien territory, very barren, and it's a part of the space in which those that are on the mission, the employees that have joined the mission, will go and discover and explore. Well, I'm standing in a giant warehouse building, which at this point is fairly dimly lit. I can see white bricked walls all around me. Some of the upper areas of the room have had sort of uh, what looks like almost tin foil covering some of the tubes and the pipes that are high up. And in the distance, the ceiling lowers, and there's a rather darker, slightly more sinister-looking area about sort of 50 feet away from where I'm standing. I'm being quite careful about how much I'm saying here because there's an element of secrecy and mystery to all this, which, of course, is part of the deal, Fabian. Explain... Well, tell me what you can tell me about where we are and why. So we're in some sort of transport. We're, we're in some sort of ship. If I was a member of the audience, I will have walked in the way we have walked in. So I came in off a main London street, mm -hmm. I can say that much. I came through a big gate, which is padlocked, past grey painted quite high fences. What looked to me a petrol station? Yes, and is now the headquarters for Brave New Ventures. We're going to head now towards the other entrance. OK, lead on. OK. Let's take a step away from the event that we're describing now, because I know you're being a bit coy, and I know why you're being a bit coy, and clearly that, that's fairly self-explanatory. Tell me about the idea. We've always had this dream, really, of the idea of being able to live or to walk inside a film and get and look deeper inside a film. So what we do and what the audience does is they take a, a leap of faith, really, and we give them a character which is connected to the film and they, we take over a building and turn it into the world of a film. When we last did The Third Man, we took over a disused factory in the heart of Clerkenwell and turned that into the world of... 1940s Vienna and the audience became part of the espionages and all the different um, characters and um, when we did One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest we took over an old hospital in Kensington and turned that into Oregon State Hospital and the audience were admitted to the hospital and I think what we're interested in is that the idea of audiences coming together having a social experience and looking slightly deeper inside the themes of films we see films as being something hugely powerful and important for communities, for people to meet each other, to connect, to discuss, and to find new ideas. How much do the audience know in advance about what they're going to see and what kind of experience they're going to have? Very little. We build a world which is parallel to the film. Um, so for this film, the, the next secret cinema, we created Brave New Ventures, which is a fictitious organisation, but it's actually an organisation that's gaining a lot of steam. It has gathered a thousand members on Facebook and Twitter in only a few days. But they know very little. All that they know is that, there's, um, that it's on a certain date. They book their ticket and they're told to go to a location and to bring their costume and certain props. You mentioned some examples. Is it right that you've also based events around significant events as well, where you felt that uh, something like what you've just described will work because of something that is happening in the world or in the country and people are aware of it and talking about it already. Recently we did the other cinema where we did La N at Broadwater Farm in East London and we did this on the eve of the mayor elections and then we took it to Paris on the eve of the presidential elections and the point we were making is that I believe that uh, there's an isolated part of our community in which don't have access to culture, do not have access to community projects and places like Broadwater Farm who are in the media cast as something terrible actually is a, a hugely creative, there's a huge amount of young, very, very um, enthusiastic folk. 
you're saying this kind of thing, this kind of idea could be explored in every corner of the country. Absolutely, and the project at Boardwater Farm was really to bring a little bit about what we do at Secret Cinema into the world of what is quite a disadvantaged part of Britain. Which leads me nicely to talk to Carol Maund, who's here from Arts Bournemouth and has been on this tour with us as well. Uh, so she can't say very much about where we are either. But you are an example, your organisation, of a- another way of exploring cinema in a different way. Bournemouth at the moment suffers from not having any regional film theatre. So we wanted to provide something new and we had a fantastic audience that came along to one of the other cinema events which we stage in the Pier Theatre which is again in a beautiful kind of atmospheric but very old fashioned and slightly run down theatre. And the film was? And the film was Brief Encounter which was on Valentine's night and I think it offered people an alternative to going out for a rather expensive and probably cheesy meal. So we provided a whole kind of event very much in sort of uh, spirit of uh, secret cinema, except it wasn't secret. But people dressed up, we set the scene, we turned the theatre into the railway station, we invited what is probably the only remaining actor of the film, Margaret Burton, who came along and introduced the film. And we had a band, a 40s band, and it was just an amazing experience. And what was the audience reaction? Absolutely, like, can we have more? Does that lead you to think that film going now? sometimes has to be a bit more of an event and it's not just about buying a ticket and going to sit in a cinema and absorbing what's put in front of us on a screen. I think so. I think that the multiplexes offer a very anodyne, kind of almost unpleasant experience. What's very nice about this idea is that it becomes part of a whole scene. You know, you get involved, you can bring your friends, you can talk, you can eat, you can enjoy the experience and that's what I think people really want now. You're both clearly very enthusiastic about what you do. How do we pay for it? I mean, clearly people buy tickets, but, I mean, looking at the scale of what you're embarking upon here, Fabian, this is an expensive project. With this project, we have 36,000 people coming who essentially, by buying a ticket, are investing in the world that we're creating. And what what we see is that there is a shift and that uh, people are looking for something else. And can an organisation like Arts Bournemouth fund future projects along the lines that you just described? Well, we are about to launch the festival, which runs in September, October, and we will be doing similar events there. I mean, we're very fortunate that we have a fantastic history in Bournemouth around the Shelley family, and that means that we can use the Shelley Manor and create something in a derelict building. So that's another start of something new. And is this something, Fabian, that even a small village, a place which has far fewer resources, far fewer people around, Could they really embark upon something like this? What we want to do is open it up to anyone, anywhere, that has a community centre, a disused garage or a disused town hall or a library, as there aren't many of those coming out, to turn it into a cinema. Yes, absolutely. The only thing you really need to pay for is the film, and that is very, very cheap to um, hire that. And then you can do what you like. I mean, I think people love this idea of dressing up. I mean, look what's happening with the Jubilee celebrations. There couldn't be more people kind of getting involved. It's all free, it's all volunteers. And actually, that's what makes the event so exciting, that people feel it's for them and their audiences and their community.